Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly though, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Sleeping Warrior. How are you doing? You know what? What? Shut up. Chat. I was in bed last in bed last night. I got a notify on my phone, and it said Red, Red Pill Philosophy has gone live, and his title had something with the word debate in it, and it said a live debate open panel or something like that. So I was like, really? Thought I'm getting on that. So I jumped off, jumped literally, gets out of bed. I think it was about two o'clock, maybe three o'clock. Gets out of bed, fires up the Quattro, it gets in the driving seat, buckles up, presses the turbo nitrous nitrous button, and zooms on into his uh, into his hangout um and initially there was just flat earthers that joined but then a couple of people a couple of people like on the ball earth side joined and basically it was like the worst example of ball earthers trying to have a discussion ever because basically he gets tommy do you remember tommy from birmingham yes it's over here and over here and over here all the time you got tommy from birmingham lewis hackett a continuous over speaker um and p mars and I was like, Jesus, I, I can't, I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not putting up with these three. I so I dropped. Nice. <laughs> so I dropped, and I gave my space to Soundly because I thought I'd rather him go in than me have to sit on the panel with them three idiots. So I was listening in background while I was making a response video to Jose, and basically what happened was it ended up being the worst mess I've ever seen, and it's because either it's a combination of factors. Um, because he's got such a big, um, like live listener subscriber base, or oh, subscriber base, he's got 200,000 subs. Obviously, the ballers are gonna wanna go, they're gonna want to go in there. However, the things that they were saying, they just wouldn't get away with saying on this show, they just wouldn't. For example, um, when they were asking about how does gas pressure exist next to, um, uh, how does a gas pressure exist next to a vacuum. Basically, Lewis continuously asserted that um, there is a force holding it down. How do you, how, you know how he speaks? It's like, I'm testing what you know about what you think you know. And I'm like, Lewis, there is no force according to your model. The current science for gravity is not Frank. A, an attractive hold on, force hold on. between masses. Hello, Frank, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, good to have you. Thank you. How are you guys doing today? Very well. So, so, so. I caught the uh, I caught the last hour of the red pill philosophy debate. I was actually in it. Didn't get much of a chance to say anything though. It was really bad. It was bad in the it sense. Was a mess. It was good in the sense that he had his first hangout and it was successful in terms of numbers. Absolutely. But in terms of quantity and quality, it was awful because basically these ballers would not get away with what they were saying in his show in his in his, in his uh, debate here. Now, obviously, right at the very end, in the last five minutes, he asks them. Why is it you guys don't go in Nathan's anymore? And obviously they said, because he's a bully, because he's his mute button, because of this, because of that. The simple fact is, these guys will not get away with this nonsense rhetoric that they push. And they got away with it with Red Pill Philosophy, only because he hasn't learned about obfuscation tactics. And Nathan doesn't allow it. The simple fact is this. You guys need a gravitational force You're cut for how your atmosphere sticks to a ball. Your current science doesn't give you an attractive force between masses. It gives you the, the curvature and the slowing down of space-time in the context of Einstein. There is no force. And Lewis is there dogmatically asserting, and, and, and not Kosho, um, 
Tommy was sat there hold, like holding his willy while he did and claiming that the guys that were challenging it didn't know what they were talking about. And it was literally the bamboozle, um, like uh, hijacking of the, of, of the... It's like when you're crossing the bridge and Billy Goat's Gruff jumps out and he attacks you and all that and makes you pay. That's what it was. It was an ambush. So on the one hand, it was successful. Successful. On the other hand, it was an absolute shit show, and they would never, ever, ever get away with saying that crap on on this show. So when he was asked at the end, "Why don't you go on Nathan's anymore?" Let's correct the record. They they can't come in Nathan's because they can't answer the questions that Red Pill allowed them to get away with obfuscating in the show. So I'm not having a go yeah. at Red Pill. I'm a supporter. Yeah. However, these ballers are the most dishonest people I have ever seen. You can't claim there's a force attracting a for uh, there's a, a um a mass attracting another mass because of a force anymore. That is not your current science, Lewis. Stop saying it is. And when Jeremy tells people that a vacuum is nothing, how can nothing create a force? It's not the fact that it's nothing. It's the fact that there's a disequilibrium and imbalance between the pressure against the non-pressure. So it's not that a vacuum creates a force or does something. It's the fact that there's a pressure that's dying to get into the space. And I was sat there listening to it, and I just thought Nathan would Nathan would just be... Honestly, you would have muted everybody, and you would have said, no, this is the way it is. How are you going to deal with this specific point? Not obfuscate the rest of the point and make it sound like you're winning just by bullying. Deal with this one specific point first. Then we can move forward logically and progressively. And that couldn't happen because everyone was speaking on top of each other. And literally the ball has won by bullying and presenting their rhetoric nonsense, literally without valid opposition, not because he wasn't modding, but because they wouldn't get away with it on a channel that is flat earth um, orientated. Red Pill's not primarily flat earth, is he? Somewhere else and he's come to it. And that's all well and good. And I'm not criticising. However, just, they managed on, Anthony, I'm sorry, I've got to stop you because you sorry, just bear with me. Anthony, please. Hello, Arwin. Hello, Chocolate Saiyan. Hello, Plain Truth. Hello, 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 hello. what? Sorry, Good Anthony, you carry on. And it's just disgusting. So the ballers got more chance to sp express their bullshit nonsense. And it's like you wouldn't get away with that on Nathan's. And that's the reason why they don't come in. So what we should do is we should encourage Red Pill to do it the way he did it to let them all go in and show their nonsense, nonsense. And then we'll just contrast all their points when they're not coming in and just tell the, the real audience the problems that Red Pills allowed them to obfuscate with. And we can just dissect it by proxy because that's what has to happen. You can't have a gas pressure next to a vacuum without a force. But your current science is not a force. It's the bending of space time. It's the curvature of, what did he call it? The fabric of space time. Um, it's the slowing down of, of time. It's utter garbage. Stop asserting you've got a force. You don't. That's not your science. It's out of date. You can't argue Newto Newtonian principles. Okay. But you've got to argue that for, for how you've got a gas pressure next to a vacuum of space. But you haven't got it in real world. That's not what the physics says, is it? It's your own maths against you, your own science against you. And then the, Jeremy had the um, the, 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 the um, audacity to criticise Red Pill philosophy for being a science denier because the angle of attack, um, which he claims is all bullshit that's made up, he just refuses to accept that it's actual science. It is observed. It is repeated. It is a thing in contrast to this curvature nonsense that goes over a radius that does not exist, that cannot be measured, cannot be validated or verified. So to answer your question, I was exhausted by tiredness and also frustrated by the nonsense that these ridiculous, dishonest ballers like Jeremy, Tommy, Lewis Hackett were able to spew their nonsense out to people on a massive scale audience. And I just thought overall it did more damage than it did good because they, they can't get away with this nonsense in here. I'm done. Okay. Well, I want to give a big shout out to Red Pill Philosophy because this is the same conversation we had at about show 60, show 65. Because what I wanted yep. to demonstrate was precisely what Red Pill demonstrated. So it made me smile quite a lot because it reminded me of the early stages of this show when the same exact thing happened. But it was what I wanted to show. So seeing it happen on Red Pill, I was like, well, that's what they do. And it's good to see it being showed or shown, I should say. So I was, I enjoyed it, you know, I, I completely agree with you, but that's kind of something that I wanted to highlight. Now, not through any limitation of your influence, Anthony, but you ultimately said 
it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be left in a position where they can obfuscate. And regardless of my opinion, which was to say, I want to show the audience how they obfuscate, he said, well, no, we're in the minority. So we shouldn't be letting them obfuscate these points and just winning on debating tactics rather than actually having good arguments that are a winning argument. So my tap changed. But, you know, there is still a little place in my heart to want to see that. So I really enjoyed it. Shout out to Red Pill Philosophy. Yeah, shout out to Red Pill. But yeah, that was crazy. That was a shit show. <laughs> the Globers are just let, crazy. Let they, they're talking over each other. Like, it, it was just a hot mess. Yeah. Let me just be clear. Just in case, I know Red Pill watches. I'm not criticizing what you did. In the chat right now. The way that they were able to do what they did, because it not only was a shit show, but they're able to, the more times they can say, gravity, 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 it's just indoctrination. Well, what we should be saying is evidence, 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 and Einstein, 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 current science, current science, current science, because they just get away with screaming nonsense from, that's, it's antiquated science, it doesn't exist anymore, but they still claim it, it's nonsense. Anyway, I'm done. Again. All right, you're passionate about it, Anthony, I love it. Riley, I mean, you notice how when they were talking about the vacuum and the force, they try to keep it as to vacuum can't be a force but when the other guy was trying to bring it to back to talking about the pressurized system being next to the vacuum they didn't want to talk about that let's just keep going back to uh, the vacuum is not a force not a force it's, <laughs> it's laughing what it is, what it is. Also, uh, we're hardened criminals now to all these tactics that they use where they're even allowed to talk about it before they address how they can have a container uh, how they can have it without a container obviously if you're not familiar about that particular point it's just going to be allowed, isn't it? And it's not that, like I say, I'm not, I'm not criticising Red Pill. However, criticising the ballers for dishonestly pushing that point, knowing that there's an issue there with the requirements for a container. Because like Conspiracy Cat says, without the balloon, there is no pressure. Right, that's the starting point. Where's the pressure come from? Can't have it. Gravity is not an attractive force between masses anymore, guys. That's antiquated science. Are you all science deniers and you push it anyway? You shouldn't be pushing that ball as if you know it's out of date, but you push it anyway, don't you? Liars, little scumbags. It's funny how they call us science deniers, right? But whenever you quote Brian Cox or Neil deGrasse Tyson, they're the first ones to say, oh, but they're wrong. They're wrong. And to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, but it seemed like they were really they were messing up their terms a lot. Like they kept saying, "Vacuum can't be a force because a vacuum is nothing." Well, yeah, uh, like a theoretical vacuum is nothing, but there's all the different magnitudes of vacuum in between, you know, a high pressure system and nothing, and kind of like uh, absolute zero. Uh, a true vacuum is kind of more on the theoretical side. Even what NASA says deep space is, there's still some particles. It's just an extremely low pressure. So it's not really the, the the vacuum itself isn't a force, but it's the force of the particles in the higher pressure system moving to the lower pressure system. Oh, entropy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. They, they didn't want to talk about that. And. But that's always it, isn't it? If you don't actually talk about the things that matter, you can just go around it and then speculate about everything in every way conceivable because they'll never find the answer anyway. So it's just a playground to them. They're yeah. just technically postponing their actual homework and they just keep on playing with their damn space Legos. <laughs> I got really just like I did 20 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> they, uh, they really they didn't. It was really, really hard to get a word in. It was almost impossible. Uh, but uh, when they were talking about they had some pictures up and this item, they had a lighthouse that was obstructed from the bottom up. And I didn't even get the chance to ask them. But once you ask them the question, how do you go from obstruction to earth curve? Like that's, you know, that's such a huge jump. And they have no, they have nothing for that jump. All they have is the obstruction. They don't have anything else. Oh, no, 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 no. They do have something. They do have something. Faith. Well, no, 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 no. They've they got something very Faith specific. <laughs> very specific thing. What is it? Let's ask the whole panel. What links obstruction to Earth Curve? What is the, what's the tool used to link the two? 
The assumption Magical of R. R. Ah, ah correct. R. The R value. There you go. <laughs> And that's where that's where I that's where I wanted to obviously take the conversation, but it, you know it's it's impossible Not to it. get a word in with those guys. Look, in the end, all Globers are just a bunch of pirates. Arr, arf, matey. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty sad. On a quick side note, Nathan, do you know how hard it is to try to find the Flat Earth Debate YouTube channel? I do. I mean, what? I do give out the link to it, but it's it's an yeah. old business channel that's just been reappropriated temporarily. So I, I had some news from YouTube today in terms of when I could finally, you know, halve my workload or hopefully even get back to normal, which is about a quarter of the workload that I currently have. Um, so hopefully okay. middle of this month, so middle of February, about 15th, I should be able to start streaming again on the second channel, which is basically yeah. sort of back to normal. Um, and then middle of March, I'll be back in the main channel, which is back to normal. But at the moment, yeah, I, I don't actually want to promote this channel very much. So people in the chat right now um, can probably tell I'm not saying share the show, share the show. What I do is go into the bigger channel with a bigger audience when it's rebroadcast an hour later. So if you're watching this now, a Nathan Oakley 1980 member of the audience, this is an hour old. So this was recorded an hour ago on a very small channel that hardly anybody subscribed to. Uh, intentionally so you know 10 12 days from now this channel won't get used at all so there's not a great deal of point in promoting it just for a temporary measure which is all it's being used for it's just a temporary channel if i suffer on the other channels which does happen every so often but this is a backup for the backup if you want to call it that way but no i don't want to promote it um as much as this may sound mercenary it's not a commercial channel it doesn't have a super chat it doesn't make me anything so as frustrating as that is it's just extra work to get the show actually recorded on this channel to put it out where it needs to be on the main channel so yeah hardly anybody knows where this is long may that continue any news on your main channel the main channel is always going to be in the same position. So the main channel suffered a community guideline strike before all the bogus copyright strikes came in. So that was always going to be the case. That when this happened, I was already on the second channel, if you remember, and mirroring it onto the main channel afterwards immediately, which, yes, it increased the workload quite a lot, but it, not anywhere near as much as it is now. Literally, I don't get a minute to myself at the moment. And I've got people in the background doing work for me saying, can you give me this information so I can do the work for you? And I literally haven't even got time to assist them. Um, you know, Ranty's the same. He's been pestering me about Patreon. Yeah, that's an opportunity. So check out my Patreon. <laughs> Here you go. Ranty talked me into doing it. There it is. There you go. That's a big enough plug. Um, but yeah, I just didn't have the time to give him. So when it came to Patricia cancelling the show on Thursday, I was like, okay, that means I've actually got time that I didn't think I had. And had it have not been for that, I'd have got gone to bed at 2am having had an entirely chock a block day. But I think if I promote this channel... Flat Earth Debate channel, that is. Um, it'll just mean I've got to start moderating the comments and monitoring the channel, and I, I just can't be bothered. It's just too much work. It's great that I can actually stream. Delighted that I can do that. But as soon as this show finishes, it just gets turned off, so it disappears. The only show that's on there is a really old show, just so people, if they do want to specifically watch live, they can navigate their way to that one debate that I've left on there so they know they're in the right place. Um, but, yeah, like I say, 10 days' time-ish, this channel won't even be, you know, won't even be useful to me anymore unless it happens again. Hmm. But we do have an audience. Don't know how many people. Let's have a look. How Eighty-five watching? watching. Not bad. Yeah, eighty people watching. So you know, it's not the two hundred plus people you get in the main channel, but not a bad audience considering this channel's not advertised. Yeah, if you type in Flat Earth Debate, you're not going to find your way to this channel. So what you'll get is Indeed, ABC, tried. BBC, Vice Media. That's what will come up if you type in Flat Earth Debate. That said, you will find your way to a Flat Earth Debate. So I've, I've checked on several computers that aren't mine. In other words, not cookied up with all of my searches. And you do find your way to a Flat Earth Debate when you search in YouTube. So as much as I'm in the chat of these channels saying, look, we are being censored. Well, that's a fact. YouTube are censoring us doesn't change the fact that the debate still appears. So I don't know if the debate happens to fall outside of that censorship because it's obviously a debate. Um, but ultimately, if you type in Flat Earth or Flat Earth Debate, you will f come across one of these shows pretty quickly.
Well, in either case, I, w- I want to give Red Pill props for doing what he did. Yeah, uh, he was a champ. He was a champ last night, just sitting there. At one point, he had like five ballers just all yelling at him, and he was just sitting there, <laughs> just sitting there laughing like, "Yeah, yeah go tards." Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Nothing like being yelled at by a like, fundamentalist. It's like even if they had like good points to come across, like they couldn't even lay them across properly. You, I mean, you got Tommy who just, I don't know what the hell's wrong with that guy. Just can't speak, right? Doesn't know how to con- carry a conversation. And then, I don't know, everybody's just talking over each other. It's like, guys, I get any ideas across to people. If you're trying to convince people that this flat earth thing is just so stupid, but all you did was make yourselves look stupid. So you All right, says, enjoy that. Says Nathan, but you do care about getting the truth out there and not just about making money. It's surely not about, or not only about making money, it's about getting the truth out there. Yeah, well, I've picked this topic, you. so I could have picked anything. I've been on YouTube for 10 years and I've covered various different topics. I'm only going to do what I like doing. So obviously I like this topic. But first and foremost, whether or not you like it, I would consider myself a YouTuber. That would be what I'm trying to achieve. The topic is obviously of critical importance because if it's not interesting, I'm not going to want to do it. I'm not going to want to dedicate day after day after day to a subject I dislike. Far from it. In fact, I had this conversation with Owen the other day. I was like, are you sure you like this subject? And Jaron says this all the time. If I was just here for the money, <laughs> I'd cover the ball because that's getting Absolutely. promoted to all hell by YouTube. My goodness. Just do you what know. the side man does. My yeah, goodness. like Simon Dan, exactly. I just go, well, that's uh, obviously far more profitable than this, <laughs> right? Well, no. It's not even close. <laughs> yeah, so it's not just about making money, but by the same token, I've got to eat <laughs> and pay bills. You're right. Exactly. That's why Patreon's there now, and as much as I was reluctant, um, now that I've got a Patreon, I'm really pleased, you know. It's like, wow, someone's actually, you know come and become a Patreon to support me. And I put it in the description box. I was like, look, this Patreon's being set up in case I get screwed on YouTube. Because I don't want to leave making Flat Earth Debate videos purely because I'm not making any money and just have to do other things so I can survive. You know, I don't want that to be the position. So as much as I don't want to be asking people for yet another different method of asking for money, because it's criticised heavily and I don't want to be criticised as that person. Mm. On the other hand, I do feel justified and I do need that money. So, tough shit. <laughs> hey, Chris, yeah. how you doing? And, uh, the other hey, thing what's up, like, guys? Hello. What's going on? The other hey, thing about yeah. the covering like a variety of topics is, I don't know if it was the same for you guys, but you know, I used to be into researching all types of different topics, and uh, as soon as I stumbled over this, everything else became so far less interesting. I just, yep. This is all I can research now. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. It's, it's you know, for me, it's the biggest deception mankind has ever endured. The heliocentric deception is a massive, enormous lie. And that, to absolutely. me, is absolutely fascinating. Before this, yes, I did t- touch on some, maybe not call them conspiratorial subjects, but things like subliminal messaging and psychopathy. And, yeah, I do dabble in them occasionally now, once every so often. But is it anywhere near as interesting as this subject? No. World of possibility opens up when you find out that you've been lied to about the shape of the Earth. You're no longer a spinning ball flying through an infinite vacuum. Well, what are we? I don't know. Well, isn't that interesting? Isn't that a lot more exciting than the scene in the Truman Show where the teacher pulls the map down and goes, it's all been discovered. There's nothing else to look at. Well, everything's up for grabs now. Everything can be rediscovered. Fantastic. That's very exciting. For some people, it's very troubling. Having an answer to every single question is important to some people. For me, not having an answer is much more important. Much more exciting. Hey, Nathan. Hello. Hey. Hey, hey. I just, I just want to say something real quick. Um, the the, the Lotards exposed themselves last night because many times I've heard these people say, they're like, oh, I won't debate Nathan Oakley because he's mean and he bullies <laughs> people. And he talks over people and he mutes people. And yet they gang up on little old me, seven versus one. And they call you a bully. Like it's so transparent, the the fake victimhood that these guys use. 
to get away with not having real fucking debates and discussions on this topic. So I just wanted to say that real quick. No swearing. It's only an anger. I don't mind if people swear. It's only in the middle of a debate when they, which I do all the time. I'm a total hypocrite. Sorry, I forgot. forgot. (laughs) Shout out to Repeal Philosophy Denying Perspective. Thank you. Shut up, Jose. Jose. So yeah, it, it, I know exactly good. what you're talking about, Chris. It's It was the same at the beginning of the debate. It would sometimes start with me and end up with me against nine ballers. That's how it would be. Fucking crazy stuff. Yeah, I remember that. You might not. I do. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to say, guys. I, I, got, I got some stuff to do, but I'll talk to you guys later. See you later. Kudos. You have a all good right. one, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Later, Chris. Big shout out to Philosophy. Jose, you got some curvature for us, man? <laughs> What's up? No, I'm a placeholder today. Thank you. No, you're not. <laughs> I don't know if you'll get away with that status anymore. <laughs> like, like back in the beginning of times, just a placeholder. I'm a friendly. Well, we, we <laughs> still got to do housekeeping, right? So you got you got answers no. for those? Oh, we'll, do, yeah. we'll do it on the next really. show. I, I got a question for Sleeping Warrior. How about the lighthouse, Sleeping Warrior? AFK at the moment. Hello, Yeet Dab. Okay. Can you hear us? Hello, Yeet Dab. Bye bye. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Shout out to legendary Super Looming Hijacking what, Hyena for making me this new awesome logo. I like it a lot. Thank you. So, what's the score with you these days, Jose? What's, what, what's your question about lighthouses? What's that about? I know Anthony's not here at the moment. No, uh, uh, Riley did a, a video. I was scrolling to my uh, uh, subscriptions and and I see Riley put a video uh, calling me out about the lighthouse, saying he debunked my lighthouse observation. It's interesting, you know? So I saw the video and I appreciate it and I did a little answer video for him, just showing a little more data. Not He didn't debunk anything. He was just asking for, I don't know, data. He just ignored what I presented, and I presented more new footage and data on my little rebuttal of the video. Can we see it? Uh, hello, hello, yeah, nothing. if you want to play it, it's like, it's long, hold on one it's like second. Sorry, hi, hi, nothing. Can you hear us? Being trolled, I think. Hey, hey, Jose, let me, uh, let me ask you a favor. Yeah. So I just put up a video... <clears throat> of my observations off the California coast with a particular oil rig. And I don't make any commentary. Oh, you saw the oil rig? Yes. Commentary? I mean, the one that I just put it up yesterday, so it's like brand new. I, I saw it last night, yeah, in the middle of the night in my lunchtime. Oh, okay. All right, well, I was just going to say I'd be curious to hear. Uh, you don't have to give an explanation now, but I'd be curious to hear any feedback as to what no, you think. Really cool, really on. cool observations, yeah. Well, a lot of optical effects going on in, in, in that band of refraction and disappearing and merging and dancing around really cool observation i like those fraction limit yeah that's why i'm uh i got a lot of those observations but i've i'm trying to to go out more on the clear days where i cannot see any of those effects it might be a little bit there of the effects because there always is but the last few observations lighthouse on the bridge was super crystal clear and yeah just, <laughs> to me, is 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 the nail in the coffin, you know. Okay, well, so then let me just ask, since we're on this topic, then if you remember the very first image I show, the entire body of the oil rig is gone, and the only thing that you can see is what looks like the antenna of an insect coming up over the horizon, and then I just simply show that same location from my same elevation at numerous other times and you can see the entire oil rig not only compressed but also stretched out to where it actually looks like an adat you know crawling across the horizon so i mean when you have something like that to to hold up next to your lighthouse observation i think that you have to hold both of those things next to each other and evaluate them in the same way so I'm going to repeat my critique of your lighthouse and say that it's not curvature, it's distortion, it's compression. So, but like I said, I'd, I'd be willing to hear your critique. I'd, I'm asking you to make comments 
and give me your thoughts as to what exactly is going on with what I provide for the last video I put out, which is on the plain truth, by the way. Yeah, anybody go check on the plain truth channel. He got some really cool observations. Uh, I got to review, watch it again because I saw it like scroll, scrolling it down in one and a half times just to, to see it. But I will, I will pay more attention later and, and just think about it and talk to you when, when, when I see it really well, you know, detailed. So what, what was the extra data then, uh, Jose? Uh, I, I had in a different, like on the 27 mile observation, 20 plus miles, uh, on the 17 miles to the lighthouse, I got this little bit of the lighthouse sticking up with two two stripes. And before in the other spot that I cache it, I can cache the same lighthouse at a little under five miles away. And and I can see the whole lighthouse. I mean I can see half of it and then the bottom half is blocked by the trees. But if you you know in your if you eliminate the trees, you can see the whole lighthouse. I mean you can add the stripes and it will add up as a complete uh, scale lighthouse. In the 17 miles, if you take the little band of trees out, you cannot add all the stripes missing in that little band on the bottom. Okay. You see compressed, but it's, uh, it's, it's too much, too much missing to be compressed in that little bottom section. So what, what's your conclusion then? There you go. My conclusion is it cannot be explained by the compression so if you see, you're gonna like this because it's the same answer, and I know we're gonna go to this route, but it has to be curvature. Sorry, just asserting that it has to be isn't really making a conclusion that links to your observation. So how do you link the two together? That's quite a leap. Uh, I mean, uh, I think I can answer with a question, what else can it be? It could be a limitation of the angle combined with an obstruction in the near foreground due to perspective. No. Hello, Bash prompt. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hello, Bash, can you hear us? Hello. You need to say hello if you're going to join. I'm going to kick you out if you don't say anything. Yeah, I answered no. You know what? I say maybe. I say maybe. Yeah, maybe, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen this observation done in this particular way. Yeah, but who cares? You haven't linked the observation to Earth curve yet. So it doesn't matter about the comparable observations until I get some sort of link between you seeing the bottom of a building missing and Earth curve. There's no connections thus far. So it, it doesn't mean anything yet, Jose. Yeah, can I jump in real quick? Because I'm just going to repeat my cr critique for Jose again. Simply saying that it can't be distortion or compression doesn't make it so either. So I'm going to ask you again to provide documentation of your working through your observation and eliminating scientifically the variable that you are simply dismissing. I mean, you can't just simply dismiss it, Jose. We're not going to let you. We love you too much, Jose. We love you. Oh, I, I love you all, guys. But <laughs> the same thing, I think. Uh, I think you are just not accepting the, the food is not accepting the explanation, the, no explanation, not, not just accepting reality, because I just don't see it working on a flat earth. Sorry, with the, the reality, reality. With the angle. I'm going to say We're it again. Not accepting the reality I'm going to say it again. Was given say it again. To so, us? Sorry to interrupt. Jose, not accepting what? I accept that you have a picture of a building with a couple of stripes missing. Okay? I accept that, because you've got a picture of it. So what? So you don't you you provide me with an explanation, very convoluted explanation that cannot be, it cannot be. I don't know. It cannot. It cannot happen. It just is impossible. Jose, what? Jose, why? It, How it is can't, it it, wait, 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 Jose. It can't just be a lighthouse that's obstructed because it's very far away. Where, where no, do you get? Where be, do you get that? It's, where do you get that? It's curved. How do you get from? you can't see the bottom of it to it's curving away from us and that's the reason we can't see the bottom how do you get to that point well perspective and diffraction i heard a good a good explanation i, I don't know who it was i think in the red pill oh, sorry baby, when you jose. Do the... sorry just that's one right. second is anybody watching the back chat yes i am thank you Owen. sorry jose we need so i'll do a really quick analogy on the on the diffraction limit 
when you are doing an eye test, you got this little pyramid with the big letters in the top and the very tiny letters in the bottom. You can read the letters in the top and you can read all the letters and then the bottom, you just see a blur spot in the bottom. But you see it, you just see a blur spot. That's the diffraction limit. Let's scale that really big, big pyramid of letters and put it really far away. Zoom in with a camera, the same thing is going to happen. You're going to be able to, to discern what's in the top with all the details, and then the bottom is going to be just a blur spot. You, you're still going to see it. It's there. It's not going to be disappearing from the bottom. It does not happen. That's the Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Do you want me to explain why? Jose. Explain why. Okay, excellent. So you are at six foot tall, correct? Yeah. Give or take, roughly. So... As you yeah, look exactly. at you standing in the distance, let's say you're half a mile away. Let's not worry about the actual figures used and their validity or accuracy. It's not it's not relevant to the point. But let's say at half a mile, we can look at you at a P900 and see you, and you represent five pixels in the camera. You with me so far? I'm following you. Okay. So now let's push you out to two miles. Now you're one pixel in the camera. You with me? Yep. Now we're going to push you out to 10 miles. Now you're no pixels in the camera. You with me? Yep. Oh, so we can't see stuff forever then. You've just asserted that we should see the stuff forever. Well, let's now change no, no. you. You understand that you would disappear eventually. Right, Jose? Yes, I understand. Right. Now let's do it with a wall. So we've got a six foot wall and we're going to look at it at the same distance. So we're going to look at a six-foot wall at half a mile, and we can see it's five pixels. Okay? Yep. Now we're going to look at it at ten miles, and it's no pixels. It's gone. Okay? Need an agreement. Yeah, yeah, I'm following. Yeah, go ahead. So at ten miles, a six-foot wall is too small to see. The angle to the six-foot wall is too small. You agree? Yes. Now, if I build a hundred foot, a uh, hundred story building, on top of that six foot wall, Jose, do you think we'll be able to see that at ten miles? Hundred story building, yeah. ten miles. What do you reckon, Jose? Can we see it? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna see. You're gonna okay. See no worries. Foot, just need know, just need a quick glory. concession as we go. I'm not quite there. Just need you to follow yeah. along and agree. So, at ten miles. The six foot wall at the bottom of the building can't be seen, but the hundred stories I've built on top of it can be seen. So the bottom six foot is gone and the top hundred stories is visible, effectively meaning the bottom six foot has disappeared, Jose, contrary to what you just asserted. We should be able to zoom in and see it. Apart from the fact that the bottom angle is still too small, Jose. Okay, now let's try to make see another the the top six foot of that. I, I got six foot tall disappear. The the bottom, let's say one floor, one story of the building it disappeared at ten miles. Oh like away. like your lighthouse then. Okay, go ahead. Like your lighthouse, right? The bottom bit's gone. So we do definitely have an explanation for why stuff disappears from the bottom into the distance then, Jose. Would you agree? Yeah, I, or was, still... I was getting there. No, no. So no, you agree. don't agree? So you think because no, I build a hundred myself. story building on top of a six foot wall that's disappeared, suddenly the six foot at the bottom comes back? Is that what you think? No, I'm t uh, if you give me a minute, I'll try to explain it. Go ahead. So the six foot wall disappeared around, let's say, roughly 10 miles away. And I build another six foot wall on top of those. I need another 10 miles. So I need 20 miles to make 12 foot disappear. If I want to build another six foot wall, I'm going to need 30 miles to disappear. At 30 miles, I'm not going to be able to see any of the probably 50 foot in the, in the, in the floor. So it doesn't add up. The mathematics doesn't right. add up. As I said at the beginning, it Jose. Does. It exactly does. Sorry, the Alvin, I didn't need go, help. I just needed to get off. to my, end, my example. Thank you. So, Jose, so you're saying that based on your example, which is the same as mine, other than you saying the maths, which I said is irrelevant, the numbers aren't relevant to the example, you're now saying the maths, we must make them relevant. 
even though you've actually comprehended that six foot of the bottom of a building can indeed disappear bottom first, contrary to your assertion when you asked, what else could it be? Well, it could be the distance and angular size, as I first asserted, Jose. Are you still denying this? You need too much, too further of a distance to make this big amount on the bottom disappear. Uh, too sorry, big of a Jose, distance. Jose, let's just get the concession. Can stuff disappear due to a limited angle or not? It disappear in the very, very, very far away distance, yes. Oh, right. So 20 miles isn't very, very far away. Can I see 20 miles with my naked eye? No, you need a camera. So it's pretty far then, wouldn't you agree, Jose? So we've got something that's very far away, that's disappeared from bottom first, and I've given you a very concise and clear explanation for how that could happen due to a limited angle. Do you still want to assert that it's only possible with Earth curve or not? The amount that is missing... Not the amount. House, yeah, Let's just not worry about the amount, Jose. Let's just get to the concession where you say, yes, Nathan, stuff can disappear bottom first, regardless of whether or not there's any earth curve that I presuppose. That's what I need you to concede, Jose, because that's fact what is happening. And you've demonstrated it yourself with your phone. So why you are denying this, I don't know. But as I've just led you by the hand to the example with a six foot wall at 10 miles that disappears, when you build on top of it, it doesn't come back. The buildings disappeared from bottom first. Something you said could only be possible because of earth curve. Wrong, Jose. Very wrong. The angle, I can agree. A very tiny amount would disappear. Uh, let's not worry about how much. Yeah. Let's not worry about can how I much. Jump in real quick? Jose, the amount that's disappearing due to the angle is entirely ignored when you assert that it's earth curve. Do you appreciate that your concession flies in the face of the calculator that works out how much or much should not be seen or should be seen when you're on a globe? So you quantifying the amount... Hello, Wiggles. Hello. You quantifying the amount doesn't change the fact that A, it can happen, and B, that effect is not accounted for in the globe mathematics. Nathan, can I jump on real quick? I, I have uh, hold on, really quick. Just let I me just get, that hold you, on, why? That you're the why one can't I just hear a concession from Jose? I've took him through it. It's taken me five minutes. Stuff does disappear from the bottom up, Jose, due to a limitation of the angle. It's ignored in the calculations when you want to assert how much or much should not or should be missing. I appreciate you're the one that brought the calculation. You were telling me this amount. No, you, and this no I said, and no, you're the no, one that Jose, the math, no, me. no. I said the I distances didn't it. matter. No, Jose, that's a straw man. Don't misrepresent what I say. I made it very clear. The numbers don't matter. All that matters is that you concede that you can have things disappearing bottom first because of an angular limitation. The numbers are irrelevant. Your numbers will ignore this. So let's not worry about numbers. Let's just worry about the fact stuff can disappear bottom first due to a limitation in angle. And the fact that that effect is ignored when you assert it's a sphere causing this. Okay, I have to yeah, join. Yeah, the facts without to... the math and the numbers, we got to say a tiny bit disappear or a lot disappear. That's okay, what you I have mean. To yeah, 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 because, I have to hold on, why is everyone board? talking over me? I'm Shut up and just let you. me get Jose to this concession. For the love of God, the rest of the panel, what is your malfunction? Jose, so, your maths ignores the angular relationship that can make stuff disappear from the bottom. Why would I concern yourself, myself with the maths that you're going to do if it ignores this very real fact? I didn't want to bring math. You're the one that brought the math first. Uh, and then I'll I say it again, Jose. That. Don't lie. Did I or did I not say the maths is irrelevant? It's the concept that's important. Did I not say let's ignore the maths and the validity uh, 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 and yeah, numbers and yeah, distances? I missed that. Yeah, true. Right. So we're not talking about the maths. You are. Don't misrepresent and project what you want to do, you want to say how much should or shouldn't be missing based on numbers, not me. The fact that it can disappear bottom first is the bit I want you to concede. Yeah, the concept is about how much is missing, a little bit or a lot? Uh, no, yours doesn't account for this. Your maths for the globe ignores this. So how much is limited no, by the angle math. is ignored. I'm not talking mad about a tiny bit disappear or a lot disappearing, more than half of the lighthouse. That's what yeah, I'm talking okay. about. Yeah, okay. I say a that's due to, I say all of it. 
Okay, Jose? All of it's due to a limited angle and I can demonstrate it. As have you. So what are you going to assert that it is? Maths? Ah? Curve? Model? Yeah, all of the above. Right. Well, so you are going to use maths and I don't need to then. So you are projecting what you're doing onto me then, Jose. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. I'm not using maths twice. I've had to stop you mid-sentence because you're misrepresenting what I've said. I've demonstrated a concept. No maths required. You're now wanting to go to the maths that will ignore the concept I've explained without conceding. There is another explanation and it is ignored when you assert the Earth's a sphere. Angle. I'm picturing this concept, Nathan. I promise i'm trying to picture it and it doesn't add up the amount that is missing I oh just we're back to the maths picture. again jose how many times are you going to misrepresent me how many not times are you going to do this it's, it's not about the maths jose the maths is irrelevant if you don't math. account for it numbers. sorry take me to the maths for the angular size in the globe show me that no i i i know perspective yeah, i i i it doesn't like exist okay, go ahead. it doesn't exist the maths for what i am describing in your world of sphericity does not exist so why are we concerning are ourselves with me? It? i'm not bringing math to the table i'm saying a little bit or a lot that's what i'm saying that's I'm maths saying math. that's maths a lot is not math. that's maths a little bit or a lot is a quantification using maths hello that's maths why are you simultaneously saying you don't want to use maths and then saying you want to quantify how much or how little? That's maths. Yeah, we got it. We got to nail this down to the details. I don't want to say it disappeared from the bottom up and period. I want to say how much is disappearing. Just a tiny bit or a lot. That's it. It's math for you. Okay. No. Because how, of how what? much is math, right? Because Jose? of what? Um, how much? So you want to apply the maths because of what, Jose? Earth curve? The assumption of radius, maths, right, Jose? No. Yes, that's what you want to do, and you keep telling me I don't want to look at the maths, and then going straight to the maths. I'm visualizing the concept, a uh, graphic in my brain, how this angle works, and I should be missing a little bit in the bottom, and then the further away I miss a little bit more, and then really far away. I cannot see that far away. You uh, say we cannot see know? infinite. Why so do you keep saying work. it's a little bit? Why is it a little bit? How the hell would you know how much or how little? You have no mathematics for this on the globe. None. So why are you trying to quantify an effect that's ignored? Oh, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just working a concept in my mind. What concept? The concept of Earth curve when ignoring all aspects of angular relationships? Is that the concept you're no, no, no. working I'm with? I'm trying to add the stuff disappear from the bottom up in a flat surface. I'm adding this up in the concept in my mind. It just doesn't add up with this lighthouse observation. Of uh, it does. I've taken you through it. I'll take you through it again if you don't understand. Let's take how Let's many feet of your lighthouse is it, Jose? What, 10 feet? 20 feet? I'm sorry, but I missed that question. How much is missing? A lot, more than half. Give it me in feet. Oh, you, you, you are now you're asking me to do math. Okay, I'm I'm asking, not, I don't want to do it. You're the one making you this claim, me, Jose. Math. So what? You're not going to tell me how much is missing? Well, it's a hundred. Oh, we're getting sniped. So toes to the fire means snipe out the guest that's having his ass handed to him. Does it? Maybe not. Sorry, it's okay. I was blaming snipers. It's obviously not. A hundred and fifty foot tall, roughly lighthouse, and it's missing at least eighty foot. Eighty feet. So, do you know the angular size of eighty feet at twenty miles? No. Why not? Because I'm not a mathematician. Uh, sorry, I've just explained to you. I can tell you that if you want. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm explaining Please. to you that the angle can cause things to disappear. I explained with a six foot wall that disappears at a given distance. If you build on top of it, you won't see the bottom six foot just because you've built on top of it. So yeah, stuff does disappear due to angular limitation. And I'm asking you if you've considered the angular size of the section that's missing. I have seen things five miles away and I see it down to the bottom. So this six foot tall is not going to disappear for at least 10 miles. If uh, I sorry, want to meet how do you know foot, this? How do you know, how do you know that? 
why you just keep making assertions have you just decided the angular size and its relationship to the aperture on your camera and where it will disappear or have you actually calculated the angular size and at what point that angular size will vanish i don't i don't have to calculate it's logical reasoning you can see it and you can you can know you know what it is what is happening in the footage the footage is there i don't need math yeah to okay it. what's happening is the bottom's obscured we all know jose what's happening you're saying it's earth curve and the maths to do that ignores the angular relationship i'm saying an angular relationship can cause things to disappear you've conceded it you push a six foot wall out eventually it disappears because it's too small you build on top of it and the stuff above is visible bottom first obstruction according to you that's earth curve how do you get to earth curve you don't want to talk about the maths right jose perspective is real nathan yeah, yeah no shit that's my point it's ignored in the curve maths no, but not in my eyes and the way I see it. I visualize yeah, it. And you, you see obstruction. Sorry. So uh, why do sorry. you rely on things that do it? You see obstruction, it. Jose. Not earth curve. So when we get from the obstruction to the earth curve, you need the maths. The thing you keep saying you don't want to use. So what, you're just going to tell us that it's earth curve and just expect us to accept that? No, I want you to explain perspective. How does perspective work for me? I've explained it I three explain. times. Are you deaf, Jose? Things get smaller as you get further away from them. Eventually, they disappear due to a limitation of their angle. That's perspective. And I'll say it for the fourth time. Ignored entirely when you assert that R is causing this. But perspective it was, it is, it is an explanation which is not that one. I can explain it for you. Perspective. Uh, the objects get far away, they appear to get smaller to your eyes. And everything then appears, the sky appears to go down, the floor appears to ramp up. That's Arwen's slant. There you go. The slant, everything along in the slant, go with it. And then everything appears to go smaller, uniformly in the distance, and converging to a point until it disappears with the distance. Uniformly, Nathan. You're forgetting one aspect, though. <clears throat> As it moves further oh, beyond that slant point, it also gets cut off by the miraging zone. There's no miraging in my observations. Crystal crispy clear. Are you AMT. serious? AMT. Yes. What yeah. about you all to your footage? I've sent, you I've sent you an image oh, on Skype now. I'm, I'm talking about the last, the last few videos. So the lighthouse, the bridge, crispy clear. No, no mirage. That's what I'm choosing Ooh. really clear days for my new observations. Okay. Yeah, I can't share Skype, Ranty, so if, if you can join and actually present it on the panel, that'd be really great. Hopefully Ranty heard that. So, Jose? Yeah. So, you... How do you... Hey, Ranty. Hey, What's up, Ranty? Hey, it's all good, all good. So, when you say that you're trying to picture it in your mind, right? So, what you're trying to picture in your mind is the, the curvature. No, I'm trying to picture a perspective, reality, just perspective on a flat surface, on a flat plane. I draw. I know how perspective works. I'm trying to... to figure it out diagram it i draw it a lot of drawings that's no. why I, it just doesn't make sense hold on that's paper perspective that's like a trick yeah. that makes it look like perspective that's not actually perspective Hello? right what you get taught in school we, i got it taught in school many times that's not actually perspective it just helps you make it kind of look like that now I got a question. When we see, let's say, Red Pill Philosophy Observation of the Lighthouse, which was awesome, you can see down to the cars on the bridge. We see it because it's there. Nothing is missing. I was 17 miles away. But then when I don't see half, when I see half obstructed in a very clear day like that one, then it's not we see it because it's there. It's just a totally convoluted compressing angle of view, refraction, diffraction explanation, right? I mean, isn't the same bread? You got 
you got total opposites. I don't understand. No, yeah, but that's because of the miraging zone. The miraging zone doesn't no, always have the same effect. The only thing that it does have is effects. Just Jose, not you don't you don't see how they just manipulate the, the this ridiculous curve calculator, man. If something is missing, they, they who you guys who likes to use this fucking curva, curvature calculator because it tells you curvature. It's right there in the name, right? That's what that's the only way you guys find out this curvature, right? Because we don't see that in real life. There's no curvature there. So think from the bottom up, and you can't explain that. So now you have to, to, to use this calculator that assumes R and does all this bullshit when you know that's bullshit. It's not curvature. It's not showing you yeah, curvature. But when I see a, a, a long distance observation and I see it all, it's there. But then when I do the same distance observation and I'm missing half of it, it's not there. So what is going on? What is going on in Flat Earth? Can you see my screen, Jose? Yes, it's a presentation. Uh, let me yeah. click your icon. Yeah. yeah, can you can you show me where the yeah. the, the hump is? The hump, um, you know, the, the, where the curvature starts. Because obviously oh, no, we've, the, got, we've got two optical effects there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got we got two boats. You see, this is boat number one in the foreground, the white one, and behind it we have a, a big tanker boat, tanker boat number two, which is behind. Uh, we have an inferior mirage on both, which is in your model. It's where the the hump is. The problem is we have two areas of inferior mirage. So one here which is substantially higher than this one here. So in this particular image, what we're actually seeing, if we was to believe it was Earth curve, we're actually seeing two humps or two curvatures of Earth, which clearly isn't the case. So can you tell me which one is the Earth curve, please? Thank you. None. I cannot tell in that one because this footage that you take, like this one you're presenting, it's really good to explain the optical phenomena and atmospheric effects. Nothing to do with the curve on this one. Thank oh, so so is there, so so you're saying that there's blockage, but it's not curvature. In this one, you can see there's just optical effects going on. Nothing to do with curvature in this one. Oh, all yeah. right. Choose so, a clear so, day. Choose a clear observation. Curvature. So not all curvature. Uh, sorry, not all blockage is curvature. Then let's just. Agreed. Oh, all agree. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. so it's possible so, your, your lighthouse isn't being blocked by Earth curve. Then could be a different effect, like the ones we've explained. It could be, but there's none of these effects going on in then my Then why observation. on earth would we be using it as a proof of anything? So, sorry, you said there's none of those effects. Did, I, I'm sure I heard you say that it was compressed. Did you not say that? Did I say it was compressed? I say if it's compressed, this is a shitload of compression that no, I haven't seen that. No, I've seen the Stena line. I've seen the Red Pill Philosophy buildings. I've seen a few. But so, not so what in you're that, saying that amount. Is, it's of too much compression for you to believe. Is that that's what you're saying? Exactly. I don't you want can't to believe, believe what you're seeing. If you want to believe it, it's on you. <laughs> I'm not the one believing shit, bro. You're the one believing shit. You're the one that's believing. No, it. I don't that's want to believe curve. this. Compression is going to block the one believing the in curve, bro. That's you. That's not me. Sorry. Okay, so you say that you can't believe there's so much um, compression going on. I have two images here of the Stena line. Um, you've seen these many a time, and obviously we know that everything underneath this part where my cursor is, everything down to the hull is being compressed, and everything out of it is not, so evidenced here, along here. But this shitload of compression that you're talking about here is at least three times. So there's three times the compression to the actual size of the boat. How much uh, did you say was missing on your lighthouse, Jose? Uh... A little more than half of the lighthouse. And that's 151 feet. So your compression would have to be two to one to make it disappear. Here we're evidencing three to one compression on the Stena line. Yeah, I guess. So could you see how if the Stena line on the top image, Jose, had maybe, I don't know, something in the foreground, potentially smaller, it could block all of this boat. And it would appear, because the bottom's very compressed, like it's hiding more of the boat because the top section stayed in proportion. Yes. Right, so could it be the case that the bottom section of the lighthouse has become compressed and is then obscured by something like a, I don't know, wave? In the north near foreground is that a possibility not a wave no 
The waves there's no, move. There's so. no waves in your pictures. No, they're they're trees, I believe, and houses. So yeah, yeah, trees and houses. They would still be in the way, though, wouldn't they? Yeah, the trees and houses are about ten to twelve miles away, and then you add another five miles to the lighthouse. No, something like that. Yeah. Cool. So concession that essentially, you know, something in the foreground can block something out, and that the compression evidenced here, three to one, is more than enough. Uh, compared to your two to one loss on the lighthouse and you did agree that essentially if this was happening then um, it would um, account for why you can't see the bottom of your lighthouse it could it's an explanation yeah it could yeah oh, excellent okay. excellent great. not necessarily you, is but it could yeah excellent yeah, so, so there's no proof great so well the next question is jose if this is something that could cause the effect of bottom of obstruction why do you think it would be necessary to completely exclude it from the globe mathematic mathematics? Because then in the other observation, when there's no tree line, no nothing blocking uh, uh, halfway that I can hide this compression zone, I can see solid obstruction, just the hard horizon line, and then I see the obstructed structure in the distance, no compression yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, you, yes, I understand that, Jose. My question is given that that's the case, why would it be necessary to completely exclude the angular relationship from the globe maths if it's something that definitely does happen? Something that it could happen, but is not evidence in all the footage in the same observation panning around. Sorry. So even though so if there's just... compression, it cannot be compression in one little spot and then all the way 360, no compression. It has to be compression all the way around in the same distance. Yes, there's, there's, there's always compression, Jose. Yeah, things get smaller into the distance. They compress. Do you deny that things get smaller into the distance? Compress. I don't deny perspective. Oh, right. So things do compress into the distance smaller smaller angle Things as you reduce, get further away right? angular size, yeah yeah uniformly yeah. so they compress i'll ask again why would it be necessary given that you can see this does happen to ignore that effect when looking at a globe model why would you ignore it i'm not looking at any model i'm just looking at r real <laughs> life observations but you, you assert it's earth curve though don't you jose what else could it be now, I have to intersect here, Nathan. He he said that it's uniform compression. That's bullshit. When you said it's compressing, he said yes, uniformly. That's not correct. Yeah, the, the bottom angle is more limited than the top angle. We've yes, already gone exactly. through this. He's just ignored it. And yeah, decided. because you, you're, you're substituting compression with perspective. I say perspective, everything reduces angular size uniformly. No, it doesn't, Jose. Compression is something else that I have Sorry, Jose. It doesn't. The bottom angle will disappear first because it's a smaller angle. So, Ranty, can you bring your Stenoline boat back up? So on the Stenoline boat, the bottom section is more compressed than the top section. So, would you like to take back your assertion that these things uniformly compress? Because clearly, they don't. There is... There are some cases that don't, like this thin line. Oh, it right. just compresses in the bottom, yes. Some oh, cases right. so okay, there are, thanks. So, so they don't compress uniformly, which was your uh, uh, rebuttal to my uh, question, why would you ignore this? Your answer, they compress uniformly, even though the compression itself is entirely ignored. The fact that things get smaller into the distance is ignored in the globe maths, Jose. 10-foot wall is always a 10-foot wall and visible, even though you have conceded that if you push it out far enough, the angle will decrease and you won't see it. That's ignored. I want to know why you would assert that it's Earth curve, given that the Earth curve model ignores this effect. If I want to add another 10-foot wall on top of that 10-foot wall, I'd like to push it really, really, really far away. Too small to to see it uniformly top to bottom are just not going to be able to see it it's too far yeah that's our point unless, Jose. unless you say we can see forever yeah we don't say that that's what you say so are you literally accusing us of the bullshit that you use with your sphere relief 
uh, belief because that is what you do. No, I don't. I don't see forever. And I'm missing too, too much in the bottom to be this angle of view compression. How do you know? Sorry, you've just told us you haven't worked out the angular resolution of the bottom of the lighthouse. How the hell would you know? I just see it. I got a Sorry, I, I don't I care gotta, what you just see. You've mind. just made an assertion that it's not the mind. angle. Now I'm asking you to qualify how you know this, and you're saying I just see it. I just see it because it's... Oh, right. Different. Well, I don't care what you just see. The bottom is a limited angle. If you're to assert that it's too much of a discrepancy for it to be angle, I'd expect you to damn well measure it first before making that assertion. You haven't got the vaguest idea whether it's too big or too small. You don't want to do the maths, do you, Jose? So don't assert whether it's no, too big or too small to have disappeared due to angle when you haven't got the vaguest clue and haven't measured it. You just say he doesn't, he doesn't even want to do the math. He just wants to believe it, Nathan. He just wants to oh, assert it. It's too little yeah, or too much to go it. to the angle. Yeah. Right, Jose? It's too much or too little. But you don't want to do the maths. Stop making assertions when you haven't done any maths. You haven't got a vaguest idea whether or not the bottom angle is too small to disappear. So don't tell me that it is because you've looked I at want. it. You make all the assertions you want. You yeah. can make all the assertions that is the angle bullshit compression. Oh, bullshit. Oh, 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 excuse me, Jose. The assertion is behind the excuse curve. me, Jose. So we're back to this. So the six foot wall goes out far enough and disappears. Let's just stick to that bit. You still agree with that, don't you? Yeah, I don't know the six foot wall. You gotta go really, really far away. No, 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 no. no. Eventually, I don't give a crap if it's a thousand miles or one mile. Oh. Eventually, it's too small to see, right, Jose? You don't want to go there, right? Eh? Sorry, do you think you're being clever, Jose? No, do you think I'm not. You, do you think you're winning here? I'm not. Definitely. No, not. I know you're not. So don't be smart with me. Neither, neither are you. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, no, winning, I man. am winning, Jose. We're, we're, we're spinning around in the same spot. Yeah, yeah you're circle jerking here. us, asshole. Stuff does disappear eventually, doesn't it, Jose? Rigger, Nathan, call him Nathan. Sorry, Rigger? Jose, just concede again. You've already done it once. Don't be a wanker. Stuff will eventually disappear due to angular size, won't it? Uh, yes, no. perspective uniformly, yes. Right, that's ignored in your religious globe maths. I don't. I don't use globe maths. I just see. I just use observations. My eyes. Oh, of just raw yeah. assumption. Of raw a, assumption. Of, a, of obstruction, you though, you Jose. Yeah. It, You're right? observing obstruction. Yes. Right. Not Earth curve then. If you don't want to believe it's not a curve... I don't want to believe anything, believe Jose. Want, Nathan. I don't care what you believe, and I don't care if you demand that I should believe it. No, your musings <laughs> on obstruction don't bother me at all. Your musings about it being not a small enough angle for it to disappear, the amount that you can see, doesn't concern me in the slightest. Your musings are irrelevant. Can you put me on screen next, please? <clears throat> Yep, yeah, you're on. Right, okay. So, Jose, you know before when you said it was an obviously, obviously an optical issue going on here, which we're yeah. talking about this angle, uh, obviously we could probably measure this angle. We've got, as I say, it's two inferior mirages on two boats at different heights. You would agree that it's an angle in this case. This is an optical effect due to the angle. Yeah, there's the slant effect. So the, the horizon line should be higher and higher the further it goes. <clears throat> So from this observation point here on the right, if we were looking at the sea truck and it is an angle, uh, obviously this is the critical viewing angle. It's just one. Let's just let's just say it's one degree, for instance, argument's sake. This boat, as it goes further and further away, as it sails further away, more of it will become hidden behind the critical angle. Is that correct? Would you agree with that? Fortunately, Ranty's going to have to make this point on the next show as I'm going to round out this section. For the Nathan Oakley and Nathan Oakley 1980 audience, so a massive, huge, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible, and of course a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you are watching live, I will keep the stream going in this little break, so don't go anywhere, but if you're watching on Nathan or Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley, then massive thanks for watching. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!